Um, on the Construction Safety Licensing Bill, Minister, as you know, the main purpose of the bill is to modernise the system of safety certification for constru construction sites and quarrying by moving towards the licensing system and by streamlining the process of ensuring everyone in the quarry or on a construction site has the safety training or qualifications to be there. We'll do this by providing a new and comprehensive framework, as you've said, for the licensing of certain construction, quarrying and related activities in Ireland. And the bill will establish a licensing authority, which we support, to administer the licensing modelling, uh, model for the unified sector, replacing the currently, uh, the currently certificate approach across two distinct sectors, construction and quarrying. The practical effect of the bill will be to both strengthen the effectiveness and to streamline the bureaucracy around cert safety certification. We support the bill and look forward to making uh, amendments as required during later stages. And it is a welcome as a contribution to the improvement in the industry. However, this bill is only a small start in a huge range of reforms that we need in the construction industry. Thousands of residents, and it has been mentioned by uh, Deputy McLaughlin previously, thousands of residents in my constituency have been affected by the construction defect scandals. And Minister, I might say to you that uh, in, in the housing debate in the over and back, and when, uh, when government representatives accuse people in the opposition of, of objecting to, to housing developments, it would be absolutely a dereliction of duty if you have the experience that I have and people in my community have of rogue builders and rogue developers uh, putting together apartment buildings such as Priory Hall. If political representatives in a particular uh, geographic location like my own did not scrutinise every single planning application that came in front of them, so that we don't have that type of situation again. And I do, and others do, meet with residence groups as have been described. Um, meet with residence groups who are living in, in defective apartment blocks, uh, you know, fire safety issues, uh, living in an apartment that they feel could actually threaten their own family. And what the double whammy of this is that they don't feel they can speak publicly about it because of the level of investment that they've put into this property. So, you know, I think that is a point that is, that is worth making. We're much more work needs to be made across government if indeed the pyrite, mica and the apartment defects scandals are to be avoided or minimised into the future. We need effective oversight of our building regulations in the way that banking regulation has been overhauled since the financial crash. This will have to involve many more staff involved in building control by the state uh, than what we have, and we need to have boots on the ground oversight and enforcement of the regulations. At the moment, there are no consequences for defective builders due to the statute of limitations, contract law, company law, as well as planning and public procurement. It is far too easy, Minister, for a company to build something that is defective to, to, to go into liquidation, to rebrand themselves, to rename themselves something else and to keep on going. Um, and effectively, residents are powerless in terms of trying to pursue um, those who are responsible for uh, the defects in which they are forced to live. The statute of limitations has to be amended so that people can sue after six years. The rights of homeowners vis-a-vis -vis property developers, contractors and subcontractors have to be greatly strengthened. Company law has to be changed to prevent buildings, builders using serial special uh, purpose vehicle companies, which they can then liquidate after each project to protect their interests. In addition, we have to facilitate the corporate veil being lifted uh, so that the assets of directors can be got at. Because this is a real live issue in my community of people living in apartment blocks, as I will repeat, that were built by people who, um, who really have to be held account uh, for, uh, for what they have done. And it is, as has been described, a heartbreak to have invested in something in good faith, that something got planning permission, they, um, those who, who purchased these apartments felt uh, that they were you know, buying something that had gotten uh, the say-so of the, the local authority, uh, that the regulatory uh, authorities were, were happy enough with it. Why wouldn't you uh, hand over um, uh, money to, to purchase such an apartment and then to their horror they discover uh, that there's a defect involved and then again to their horror they discover that they have no recourse because, um, well, the developer was just too cute. He was just too cute. And if there's anything that's undermined the legitimacy of this republic in the last 30 or so years, it's been cute developers. Cute developers. And I would again reiterate, Minister, that as we uh, debate housing policy over and back, it is absolutely the responsibility of a fair-minded public representative to scrutinise any uh, planning application to go in to ensure that what we have into the future are uh, well-built um, you know, uh, housing uh, for people and that we don't have a repeat of what, unfortunately, uh, public representatives like myself have had to deal with and continually deal with. Uh, and again, 
it is a heartbreak because you, can't, you do not have the vehicle of using media or, or speaking publicly because you are just so worried about the reputational damage uh, that will be caused uh, to this apartment block in which you live. You want the defects to be sorted, but you don't feel you can speak publicly about it because of the investments that you've made. It's insane that non-compliance with the building regulations is not taken into account wherein local authorities are deciding on planning applications. The planning laws may be needed to be amended in this regard. If you have somebody who flouts planning regulations, how can that entity be allowed to apply for planning application again on the same level? I mean, it makes absolutely no sense uh, that the record of a, of a, of, of a company or a, a developer would not be taken into account. If we can't trust them to do what they said they were going to do uh, in a previous instance, then that has to be taken into account as they reapply. And finally, uh, in our view, it is simply immoral that dodgy builders can get uh, lucrative public contracts, as many have. Again, we need to look at public procurement processes uh, to prevent this. So, Minister, we do um, welcome the bill, but I think I would, I would like you to take into account many of the issues that I've, that I've raised in the course of our conversation, uh, and what I'd, uh, I hope to be able to, approve, uh, to achieve from the Labour Party point of view is to improve the bill uh, as, we, as we see it go through the House. Good morning.